Yep, I'm back here for now. That place was not working out. The AC was busted. I did find me a new place though. I'm moving there in a few weeks. But for now, let's talk about this movie, the release date of which was recently pushed like two weeks. Luckily for me, I just saw an early access show. So yeah, let's talk about this movie. Gran Turismo. So Gran Turismo is based on a true story. It's the story of Jan Martinborough. Jan Martinborough is obsessed with the Gran Turismo racing video game series, which I've honestly never heard of, but apparently it's the most realistic racing simulator ever. So Jan here has clocked in thousands of hours on these games, and he gets accepted into this kind of boot camp where Orlando Bloom and David Harbour are like, you guys all play these Gran Turismo racing games? How would you like to race for real against professional drivers in a professional driving circuit? And so this is Jan Martinborough's underdog story. And I found myself really getting into this one, man. This movie is pretty gripping. I mean, first off, we have Archie Madakwe as Jan Martinborough. I haven't seen this actor in anything before, at least I don't recognize him, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing him in more stuff, because he's great in this movie. It is that classic story of, you know, this is what I love to do, and he does have people close to him in his life that don't exactly believe in him, like his father, played by Jaimin Hunsu. You think you're gonna play a stupid video game about cars, and you're gonna become a race car driver? Which reminds me of the movie Rudy in that way, which Rudy is one of the great greatest true story underdog movies of all time. So that's never a bad thing. The relationship between Yan and his father was really good because his father does kind of bring up a good point where it's like, you're playing video games. Like, how is that going to help you find a career? And honestly, this whole idea of recruiting kids who play video games to suddenly do the real thing, I scoffed at it at first. I was like David Harbour. I was like, that sounds dumb. That's like spending your entire life playing those MLB baseball video games and then suddenly being recruited onto the Dodgers. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> this kid's toast. But this actually happened, so I guess it works. And Yan is recruited by Danny Moore, played here by Orlando Bloom. Haven't seen him in a while. Always great to see Will Turner back on the big screen. But folks, I'll just get right into this. David Harbour pretty much made the movie for me. I mean, obviously I'm not saying everyone else was bad. Everyone was great, and among all these great performances, David Harbour's performance was the greatest, in my opinion. In fact, I will say after watching this movie, David Harbour's gotta be like one of my favorite actors working today. It is true that he does tend to play the same kind of archetype character and everything, but that archetype that he plays, I just, I love it so much. He's always bitter in that sarcastic and funny kind of way. It's just so entertaining to watch. Like when he first comes out, he gives this spiel to all these games Gamers. You think you can do the impossible. I'm here to prove that you can't. And I was like, I love this dialogue so much. This is brilliant. And it's a perfect marriage of the dialogue that was written and the actor delivering these lines. Both come together to give an unbelievably awesome scene right here. Yeah, for me, David Harbour is now always a win. I love his energy. I love his acting style. And he was the highlight of this movie for me. Now then, one of the biggest reasons I enjoyed this movie is because it made it really easy to follow for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the racing scenes. They were made easy to follow because you see the cars going around the track. You could easily get lost. You're like, all right, which car is which? This movie really cleverly, I might add, puts a place marker on Yan. Every now and then you'll see what place he's in and you'll be like, oh, all right, there he is. And all right, now he's in fifth place. Now I know that, now I can follow it. And at other times the race will like pause like a freeze frame and text will come on the screen that says like final lap for like half a second, then it'll cut back. That fast paced editing, I felt really helped this movie, at least for me. It kept it engaging and exciting. And I love this. Sometimes when it would freeze and the place marker would come up, you would hear that PS5 sound effect. Just as a recent PS5 owner who has heard that sound a lot recently, I appreciated that. I was like, all right, I get it, Sony, PlayStation. PlayStation Studios worked on this movie. It's a Sony movie. So I get it, but it worked for me. It was a nice little Easter egg for PS5 owners. But other than those little gimmicks, the race scenes were so much fun to watch. They were shot really well. Yeah, these awesome helicopter or probably drones at this point, these aerial shots. And I was like, whoa. Quite a few times throughout this entire movie, I was like, that was such an awesome shot. And these races, they get pretty intense. I mean, there'll be crashes that happen where you're like, holy shit, that guy's probably dead. And if they're somehow not, how did they survive that? That's nuts. Which does prove correct that line that David Harbour had in the trailer, where he says, if you mess up in the game, you reset. If you mess up in real life, you could die. Yeah, that shit's real. It's, it's pretty terrifying. I would never do that ever. Now, I'm perfectly content playing Mario Kart. Also, the CG visual effects in this movie, I thought were amazing. Cause, and again, you saw this in the trailer, where while Jan is racing, his mind would transform his environment in a really cool way. That just added another layer of immersion for me. I was like, all right, he is playing the video game that he is so used to because he's clocked on thousands of hours on it. And this is what he sees right now. That's awesome. I loved it. And the second reason this movie is easy to follow is because the story in and of itself is 
pretty cliche. It is your typical underdog story like Rudy, but for me, I felt that was fine. The movie's predictability had me going, all right, so I'm not really in for any surprises here. Nothing too hard for me to understand. I'm just here to enjoy another telling of the underdog story. It made it simple for me. And call me simple-minded, but I like simple movies. So I'll give the story's cliche nature a pass. If I have any nitpicks, I do have a couple of them, but they are really slight. One, the movie does drag a little bit a couple of times. Like, it does feel about 15 minutes longer than it probably is. But that might just be an attention span thing. I don't know. When I watch it again, it probably won't bother me at all. But my other nitpick is that in the movie, Yan has this love interest who I felt really didn't need to be in the movie at all. I don't know, it just didn't feel like she served any purpose to the story. And I get that this might have been part of the true story, and so points for accuracy if it is. But as far as storytelling in the movie goes, Yan is already dealing with enough with his father and Orlando Bloom and especially David Harbour. This love interest, which doesn't really have a whole lot of screen time or importance in the movie, really felt more or less just tacked on there, at least in my opinion. As for the music, the score was done by Lauren Bauer and someone else whose name escapes me at the moment. And yeah, the score was really good, but the needle drops. The needle drops. Oh my god. This is how you do needle drops. I'm sure you've noticed in like a lot of reviews I've done this year, I've been talking a lot about the needle drops and how I feel about them in movies. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. In this movie, not only do I like the songs that are the needle drops, but they also help bring me into the movie even more. They really convey the mood you're supposed to feel. It's another layer of immersion. That's how you do needle drops. By conveying the emotion that the audience is supposed to feel while also having it make sense within the world and context of the movie. The needle drops in Gran Turismo pull both both of those things off masterfully. Huge props to everyone who worked on the music for this film. So in the end, Gran Turismo is fucking awesome, dude. I enjoyed the hell out of it. The pacing is great. The acting is fantastic all around, especially from one Miss Haba. The racing scenes are really intense. The visual effects are awesome. It's all immersive. You're rooting for Jan Martinborough, and the music just contributes to that even more. Folks, for Gran Turismo, I will say, go see this movie right now. Or in two weeks when it actually does come out. Like, opening night, go see it. So, Gran Turismo, have you played any of the games? Which one is the best? Or if you haven't, what's your favorite racing game of all time? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Now, if you'll excuse me, dude, have you seen that new Continental trailer? That looks pretty awesome too, and it makes me want to rewatch all the John Wick movies, so I'm probably gonna go do that. Peace!